Ooh. Man, it is cold today. Ooh. Gotta heat up the motor. So, rain. Rain is, rain is coming, which is good. We don't get a lot of rain here, but it's 40 degrees right now, which is a lot warmer than normal at eight o'clock in the morning. But the wind is blowing. I just, I just left Circle K. I just filled up, filled up with some fuel, and I was standing out there. <laughs> it's really blowing, really gusty. It's actually moving the car around right now, but standing there, you know, the flags that they have at the at the pumps, everything's moving. I'm headed over to, uh, I think I'm gonna go to Cal Ranch Store. There's a ranch store across the other side of the valley here. They sell a lot of different types of charcoal, like uh, hardwood charcoals and stuff like that in, in uh, I think, 20 pound bags or something. So I got a, I got a new little, like, uh, what do you, a fire pit for my birthday. So my birthday is this month. And I got this stainless steel fire pit. And I'll show you, I'll show you. I'm definitely gonna put it into action pretty soon. But what's cool about it is, you know, you ever pull up to like an existing campsite where there's a fire pit it's always filthy like you never know what other people have thrown in there they you know people throw plastic and all kinds of crap in there I've seen people throw bullets in there anyway cooking food on an existing thing is I don't know it's just not not necessarily for me even though I've done it I've done how do I turn the wipers on in this thing that's not it that's not it that's the rear. Oh, there it is. Got it. All right, just turn on the wipers for the first time. So I'm in the Lexus here. Been doing a lot of work on the Lexus. Um, I told you guys there's a Christmas tree of lights on the dash when I bought it. Got it for a better deal because of that. And the guy said, oh, it's just a sensor, which, you know, whatever. He's just trying to sell it. It's not just a sensor. It is and it isn't. So I went ahead and did the, I took off one of the uh, cam covers so I could see the belt. This is the timing belt that you're supposed to change about every 90,000 miles. And I think this one has gone 160,000 miles. Cause I'm at 161, almost 162,000. And it looked really bad, like really bad. So, I don't think this one was ever changed. So that should tell you that manufacturer's suggestion of every 90,000 is good for preventative maintenance, but obviously it could be a little tougher than they say. So I went ahead and changed the timing belt, the water pump, uh, got the kit. So it's got new pulleys in there, uh, new idlers, and a new hydraulic tensioner all underneath water you know water did I say water pump and then on this the fan had a little had chips in the blade where someone had put the hose one of the hose clamps on the wrong way and the clamp was sticking out and the fan hit it I guess that's the only thing I could see that it could be so I had to get a new plastic fan but that part's all done now now the Christmas tree apparently is the secondary air injection system and if you it's I looked it up, there's a lot of talk in the forums about it, and it seems to be kind of a common problem as it goes along. So in a nutshell, this secondary air injection system is, it's, a, uh, it's an emissions thing, right? Basically what it does, when you first start your car and it's cold, it has these, it has a blower motor, it has a check valve, it has like four different solenoids, and it's, it's got these taps coming off the exhaust. So what it does, it recirculates exhaust into your intake so it's hotter air quicker, and it allows the cats to warm up 
so you get less emissions out the back on cold starts. That's the theory, I guess. And the, this blower motor and a lot of the stuff, especially on this year, 2007, on the 4.7 liter V8, it sits underneath the intake manifold in the in the valley of the engine between the you know the cams and everything so to get to all that stuff it's a real pain you literally have to take off the whole intake manifold to repair anything so if you're gonna do that you better have all of it and it's kind of expensive you know a couple hundred here a couple hundred there you know you start adding up all these different parts well I was a I got a code scanner and I was able to clear the codes and while it was cleared, I went back out to the desert area where I, I got, I didn't get stuck, but I had a lot of slippage where I had to, you know, back up and really, really go for it. I went out there and slow, out testing the A-Track. Wanted to see if it was working. The lights, the check engine light was off. When I put it, locked in the center diff and put it in four low, the VSC off came on, which is normal. That's vehicle stability control. But the, the, the track light did not come on, which you don't want on because when the track light comes on, it means your traction control system is off. If you get a check engine light, it turns off vehicle stability control and traction control. Like right now, it's off because the light came back on. Obviously, I have, a, I have an issue with one of those things. Blower, check valve, solenoid, something. <clears throat> But I tested the A-Track and it worked. And it worked really good. Like I started to slip. I put it right in the exact same spot that I did another one in this trench. And it worked really good. So that was good. But then the lights came back on. So I'm still working on that. I got, I think I got everything I need for a, a mild little lift on this. Probably a two-inch suspension lift. I got some Bilstein shocks. Look, everything was out of stock. Everything was out of stock at all your regular players and all your like King and Fox and Icon. I mean, even Icon is traditionally pretty good, like a lot of stocking distributors, but they were 12 weeks out and Icon's, I don't know, they were kind of expensive if I went with one of their kits and this is supposed to be like a budget thing. So, so I went with Bilstein and I got actually got icon springs in the back why because they're the only springs i could find in stock so i got two inch icon springs in the back i've got bilstein shocks all the way around i got some uh, nitro gear upper control arms kind of different i don't see a lot of people using them i wanted to try them i know that they're made actually made in australia and uh, rebranded out here but i like i like what it, they have on them a lot of factory style bushings, so you're not going to get those noises. And they're huge. They're really big and beefy. They're <laughs> they're pretty big. It's crazy. I didn't realize how big they were until I got the box. <clears throat> so, what else? I got a Metal Tech uh, little conversion kit, which is really just this little puck. You pull off the airbags, put this puck on, then you can put a regular spring on. So I've got that. And that's pretty much it. Uh, a little, you know, diff drop kit. On these, the diff drops are just a couple of spacers, and they're 30, 40 bucks. So they're they're pretty cheap, just to get a little bit more uh, correction on your CV angles up front. So that's all good. So with this fire pit thing I got, it's all stainless steel, sits above ground, and now you control where you, what you're cooking over. Now, one of the things is out here where I go and camp and do all this stuff, the wood, it's all, it's mostly pine, right? We got ponderosa pine. We got all these different types of pine. So it's, it's full of pitch and resin and deadfall on the ground is, I don't know why it's usually pretty rotted, which is strange because we don't get a lot of, a lot of weather out here. So you bring your own, like maybe you pick up some wood at the local gas station before you go up into the hills. But that's all really cheap pine too. It burns really fast. It, it uh, smokes a lot. It doesn't make good coals. So there's a lot of things that went into wanting one of these kind of fire pits. Because now I can actually do what I'm doing now. Go get a bag of charcoal. And again, it's not charcoal brick X like briquettes like Kingsford or something. These are 
hardwood charcoal. There's actually a kiln up in the hills above above my house that makes charcoal. And I need to go up there and check that out because maybe I can get it straight from the source. But they make hardwood at the kiln. So it's chunks of hardwood. And I, I imagine there's, you know, cherry or maple or whatever would be good for for cooking on. And this thing has a little grate in there. So if you're going to do charcoal and you want coals, I think it's going to be pretty good. I should be able to control the way I cook a little bit better because I got lucky and I made some really good steaks one time and you guys may have seen it on can we survive it was they were delicious like beyond I don't know why why they were so good but since then I've never had that same outcome in in the cooking so that's what I'm going for should be pretty neat Plus it, it double it's not just a cooker it doubles as a fire pit and it sits up off the ground So if you're sitting in your chair it it's up about knee height, right or shin height So I think it'd be easier to get Get the heat towards you. I don't know. We'll see we're gonna test it all out I'll get it out there in the uh, in the wilds and see how it works It's so funny that I'm bundled up so much today that it was just two days ago when I shot took an Instagram picture and sent it to you guys that it was 70 like 70 degrees out I had my t-shirt on I was out I was out in the high desert over here actually that's when I was testing this uh, a track system to see if it was working I had my t-shirt on there was a little bit of wind going on but it was like a kind of a warm wind but it was like 70 and the Sun was oh it was just it was beautiful So, mission success, got um, a small bag, a 10 pound bag for like six bucks. And this was competition grade oak briquette charcoal. So they, these look more like they were stamped, kind of like a normal one. But for six bucks in a really small bag, I'd try it. Then I got a 20 pound bag of natural oak uh, charcoal. And that was $17. So not too bad. I don't know how long that lasts. If that lasts a couple of camp trips. Because really I only want to use that for the cooking portion. And when you're done cooking, then you throw the wood on top of that. And the wood goes up and it should all be good. So they had oak and hickory. those And, and a regular like charcoal briquette. So... Yeah, they had other stuff over there, but it was like in the smoking section where they had like pellets and shavings and then they had kind of chunks. I imagine you could use those chunks, but those were more expensive because they were, and I don't know why they would be because they're not charcoal. They're just hardwoods. So interesting, pretty cool. Now I'm, uh, now I'm pretty keen to try that stuff out. Seems like people are finally waking up. Parking lot's getting a little bit busier. People driving all over the place. But the, oh, where I'm at now, the wind, there's, the wind has really, really died down over here. Where I started at, it's kind of in the open, in the wild there. Oh, are you gonna turn here? It's kind of in the open wild. This car's this car's pretty sporty. It's pretty fun for a I say a small SUV. It's pretty small compared to normal like uh, you know Ford and Chevy type stuff. But even compared to the Land Cruiser, when they sit side by side, you can tell it's a little bit smaller. But man, when you drive them and you know really get that feel, kind of the way the hood looks and all that. And inside, completely different feeling from the Land Cruiser to this 570. This one you kind of sit in, it's like more of a car feel. You know, kind of sit in the seat and the hood is rounded. With the Land Cruiser, you sit like a truck. You're sitting up higher, the hood kind of goes straight out. It, they're both cool. I like, I like that they're so different, right? If they, were, if they weren't so different, 
then it would kind of be a waste, right? The whole idea of having a different vehicle is that it gives you a different feeling, a different look, a different ability. So I'm, I'm really glad that there's a big difference between the two. But they're both off-road, they're both very capable. Same engine, same engine in both. Uh, you know, the variable valve timed, the VVTi 4.7. So who knows when the best year of that 4.7 was. This one, this engine has more horsepower than the first half of this, the life cycle of these vehicles. But it also has some more complicated things to go have could go wrong with it, you know, like the secondary air injection system. I don't know if that existed on the other ones. And if it did, it's a simpler version of it and everything's not tucked underneath the intake. So you take the good with the bad. Sometimes just saying, give me the one with the most horsepower. It's not always the best, but this engine's pretty good. Like I think Toyota's squeezed it a lot out of it. A lot out of it for what it is this if, if in this engine here so this car the it wants you to run premium fuel in this one and regular unleaded in the Land Cruiser same engine people people on the forums like well what what what's it's the tune right it's always that way look if you take your normal car and you retune the computer to this performance tune usually usually it wants you to run a higher octane fuel and if you don't if you don't if you get engine knocking you that's actually the one of the worst things for your for your car is to not run the correct <clears throat> grade of fuel so be careful of that don't try and save a penny if you're supposed to run a higher octane fuel but that's it that's it's it's just a different tune it's the same engine but the way this one's tuned it's pretty torquey like it feels like a lot of torque in this motor <coughs> the horsepower kind of kicks in at the higher end as you're going but it's smaller and lighter than the Land Cruiser Land Cruiser is just that it's a cruiser it's got V8 power but it doesn't kind of get up and run like this thing does so it's very interesting that they're the same engine with very different characteristics how they act I think a lot has to do with the weight of the vehicle, one being heavier than the other, and also the tune that's on there. One saying run regular, regular octane or 87 octane gasoline, and then this one saying to run your high performance, which here is 91 octane. It's not that many octane difference, but believe me, I worked in the oil and gas industry for a long time. There is a difference. There is a difference, and that's why there's a difference in price. So, you're not getting you're not getting totally ripped off. There is there is a difference. All right. Well, at least it it did start to rain finally, which is a great thing for out here. It's a kind of an, an event when it rains, and from the cloud coverage, it looks like I might get some rain all day, which. The deserts, the mountains, all the roads need it really bad. It's been really, really dusty out here for a long time. And this looks like it's gonna be good. So, pretty happy about that. I'm, I'm excited, I got charcoal, I got my new fire pit. I wanna get out um, and try it out. Do one of those uh, outdoor cooking things. Try and see how good it works. It'll be like, all at once, I'll do a first time use of it see how easy it is I didn't get one of those charcoal starters though you know it's like a tube that you started then you dump dump it in they had one there but they had a really big one it was like really the diameter was huge I've seen some of them online and they look a lot smaller that one man I don't know it's so big it's like carrying another you know fire pit or something so I did not get that but I probably need to get something like that as far as, you know, those charcoal starters. You want to get them started, dump it in, and you're cooking. You're like, within 20 minutes or half an hour or something, you are cooking. Sounds pretty good. Anyway, I'm, I'm super excited that it's raining. I know that's weird for a lot of you guys, but we just don't get a lot of rain here. And hopefully, 
hopefully it goes all day because it it's just it's barely coming down it's a it's a light rain and that kind of rain if it rains all day it's going to do so much for these roads out here and being dusty but that's going to do it for me hope you guys enjoyed my little vlog thanks for watching thanks for hanging out with me